Well, now joining us here on our set from outside of Haynes Hall on the campus of UCLA is radio talk show host and author Tammy Bruce. Tammy Bruce, have you ever been invited to do the LA Times Festival of Books? You know, uh, interestingly, no. Uh, I'm a local. Uh, my books have done well, and uh, I've never been invited to uh, be on a panel or, or speak, but it seems to be. Why do you think that is? Well, it's, it's par for the course. You know, I, I was the president of Los Angeles now uh, through the 90s for the most part, and I think that when there is a transition like I've made in this city, which is very liberal, uh, you uh, tend to become uh, like an apostate, if you will. But it, it's, it's important, I think, as an author, of course, that there are a lot of venues uh, in which we can uh, talk about our books. But uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I've been here anyway, uh, courtesy of C-SPAN, uh, also to, to see the festival. At one point, to introduce Dr. Laura Schlesinger uh, for her speech. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's something I take in stride. Uh, it's uh, not surprising, but um, maybe that'll change someday. We'll see. And Dr. Laura is a friend of yours. She did the uh, foreword to your book, The Thought Police, in fact. She did. Uh, it, interestingly, uh, in my transition from uh, being a liberal, effectively, to uh, uh, an independent conservative, it was her experience uh, that uh, spurred that book, if you will, when she was under attack by what I call the gay Gestapo which is that she had said something, uh, had an idea, or in her instance actually was conveying a, a position of the Catholic Church, for which she not only came under fire, but there was a project uh, to effectively destroy her career for having said the wrong thing. And, uh, you know, that was really the spur, and we see, certainly we see it today still happening uh, with uh, the effectively some emerging Gestapos. But it was important for me as a liberal at the point, certainly as a classical liberal, uh, to address that issue, because that's not, I think, what any of us had in mind uh, when it comes to the issues of discussing ideas and um, um, broaching difficult uh, issues. And it, I found it uh, uh, really the emergence of the new thought police, and uh, hence my first book. And what's the new American Revolution about? It's my last book. Uh, interestingly, a, a little bit more ahead of the curve than I, than I realized it would be. It was about the message of the second George W. Bush victory. Uh, John Kerry had spent $100 million more million than George W. Bush in that 2004 election. And it struck me at the time, as I realize now uh, is a, been a, a, a generally an inclusive framework over the years, certainly after that, that the American people were not willing to accept uh, business as usual. What I didn't know was that George Bush would uh, do such a dramatically bad job in the last half of his second term that that trend would continue manifesting in uh, what unfortunately was the Obama uh, victory as well. So Americans, I think we've seen since 2004, have been saying, you know what, we're tired of business as usual. Uh, the election of Bush signified that in the middle of the war. And then the election of Obama signified it. Now what I think American people are seeing is that neither party has been honest with them. Neither party has had this nation's best interests in mind. And this third step of uh, that uh, sentiment is the Tea Party movement, I think, and uh, this remarkable shift we're seeing politically right now. And we'll get into the Tea Party in just a minute, but sure. you said that uh, you think that George W. Bush did a remarkably bad job in the second oh, half. Oh, it was stunning. I, why do you think that was? Uh, well, I think he stopped listening to Dick Cheney. I think he started listening uh, to other people. But presidents also, when they get to the end of a last term, begin to think of legacy. And I think George W. Bush is a decent man. And I think as many decent people do, they truly think that some people just simply need to be won over. Truth of the matter is, historically, we've seen some people can't be. You didn't want to win over the Nazis. You couldn't win over the fascist Italians or Japanese. You had to defeat them. When George Bush shifted into that framework, look, we also had eight years of a constant pounding on him for the, I think, perfect response after September 11th. I, I think his strategy of taking Iraq and Afghanistan and, and, and sandwiching Iran was brilliant. But when you start, when you, he, he really effectively dropped the ball, I think, in the last 18 months of his administration, which is why we're still in Afghanistan. It's why, for some reason, uh, the three stooges of the Middle East, the tallest man in the Middle East, bin Laden, uh, the one-eyed sheikh, and Zawahiri, the doctor, are still wandering around. You know, there, is a, uh, there should be victory in war uh, as opposed to management. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I think, and I have a lot of respect for George Bush uh, for his response immediately after September 11th, but you do see that, that shifting. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, Vice President Cheney addresses it a bit in his book, The Nature of When 
they stopped talking to him. And it was unfortunate. And, and the, all of these things we've seen now have shifted into a, a certainly a different attitude politically. And again, welcome to Book TV's live coverage of the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. One of the advantages of being out here is a chance to talk with California-based authors. And Tammy Bruce is our first guest up this morning. If you would like to participate in a call-in program with her, we're going to put the numbers up on the screen. 202 is the area code, 585-3885 for those of you in the east and central time zones. 585-3886 if you live in the mountain and Pacific time zones. Now you can also send a tweet to Tammy Bruce at twitter.com slash book TV. That's our Twitter address. If you'll send them a little bit early so we can get them, we'll have a chance to read them and uh, let Tammy Bruce respond to them. Uh, we're here on the campus of UCLA. Tammy Bruce, another book that she's written is called The Death of of right and wrong? What is this one about? Yeah, not that I have an opinion, right? <laughs> uh, it is about the rise of moral relativism. Uh, this notion that everything is the same, all ideas are equal, all cultures are equal, we don't have a right to uh, pass judgment, uh, to come to conclusions, uh, and we certainly see socially uh, the damage of that. I think part of that uh, has infected, of course, how we've been prosecuting the war. Uh, the truth of the matter is that this moral relativism which is fed by the left, and which I part participated in to some degree now quite some time ago uh, when I was uh, on the left, is this notion that if you can get people to believe that everything is equal and you're to not come to judgment, uh, then it means that opinions are bad as well. I mean, opinions normally then shift, and a lot of your, what, your viewers right now and listeners are coming to some opinions about what I'm saying, whether they agree or disagree. That means that there is a, a, a notion of right or wrong or whether something's correct, and opinions are imperative. But if, if society says you'll be punished for coming to judgment, uh, then the message is that you shouldn't even think about those issues and that opinions are dangerous. Uh, that is what the far left requires, because if you begin to look critically at what people are doing, you will dissent. We've already heard in the last uh, just couple of months, uh, White House officials, including the National Security Advisor for President Obama, uh, refer to in a USA Today editorial, those who are dissenting against Obama's policies are helping al-Qaeda. So now we're effectively terrorist sympathizers because we might not like uh, politically what the president's doing. I mean, even George Bush didn't go that far. I, I, I understand politics and the attempt to maneuver your positions, but what the American people have been subject to on both sides of the aisle uh, has created a dynamic uh, of uh, Finally, I've seen and called for in my third book, The New American Revolution, Americans to stand up and say enough is enough. Enough is enough. And I'm finally seeing it. and It's thrilling. Tammy Bruce, for those uh, viewers who may not be familiar with you, a quick snapshot of your uh, politics and your career. Uh, well, um, started uh, in 19, the late 80s uh, as a pro-choice activist. Um, I helped to uh, design the... Where'd you grow up? Here, uh, native Los Angelino. Uh, and, um, so pro-choice activist. Pro-choice activist uh, here in my own town in the late 80s. Uh, helped design the clinic defense structure when a group called Operation Rescue was attacking women's clinics in the United States. I found that in inherently unfair. Uh, became the president of the Los Angeles chapter of NOW uh, in 1990. Uh, was on the National NOW Board of Directors for a few years as well. Began a talk radio career also in that time period in 1993 and uh, started, wrote uh, the New Thought Police in uh, 2001. It actually came out in October of 2001. There was some debate whether or not to release it because of the attacks on September 11th, because we were just about a month out. And I, I said to my publisher, look, uh, this is going to be more important than ever, because these are issues we're going to need to discuss. And inevitably, people are going to start suggesting that we not, uh, which spurred, of course, uh, my second book, The Death of Right and Wrong, about a year and a half later. But uh, yeah, so uh, talk radio up until uh, uh, now, uh, left now uh, the National Organization for Women in 1997. Um, How did you get, though, from now to being a conservative author? You know, it was really a fight within the National Organization for Women during the O.J. Simpson trial out here. Uh, I saw that, I think, as most Americans did, as, and if, certainly as an activist feminist at the time, about the importance of the issue of domestic violence, which is colorblind. Uh, women don't notice the complexion of the fist heading toward their face. And it was uh, an issue that had been really ignored because it wasn't sexy. It was difficult sometimes to find for the press the 
uh, victims sympathetic. So we finally had uh, attention. 